Welcome to The Bo Show, a proud Telly Award winner. The country was rocked this week, though not a surprise, when the Supreme Court struck down the existing Roe v. Wade decision in an abortion court case in Mississippi, Dobbs v. Jackson Women's Health Association. This defied the practice of stare decisis, or judicial precedent, with Justice Samuel Alito penning the majority opinion, almost identical to the leaked draft just a few weeks ago, which many believe came from a clerk for Justice Sonia Sotomayor. Common sense tells you that the leak came from one of the three liberal justices' offices, but not likely the justice him or herself. But because it was leaked, we have seen protests at the Supreme Court and even people threatening and intimidating conservative justices by showing up at their homes. And that's important because today I want to talk about the windfall from this case and its aftermath for two main reasons. One is to talk about the fundamental misunderstanding liberals have about this decision. And two, to talk about the violence that has erupted from it and why we are seeing a double standard yet again from the left and the Department of Justice and other federal responses. So first off, let's talk about the misunderstanding. One of the first responses that I read online came from an account called The Progressivists and Jack Cocchiarello, whoever that is. It read, quote, Today, SCOTUS ended the constitutional right to abortion, saying it should be left to the states. Yesterday, SCOTUS imposed a constitutional right to concealed carry firearms, saying it shouldn't be left to the states. Guns have more rights than women in America, unquote. Now, when I read this, I couldn't help but think of how fundamentally wrong this statement is and its intentional ignorance, but also the moral relativity of it and the way it is intended to lead a reader, someone who may know nothing, to think. This statement is telling you how to interpret the Supreme Court's decision and is false. So let's correct it. Don't expect the fact checkers, YouTube, Google, PolitiFact, and the Pointer Institute that owns them to flag this. Filmmaker Mickey Willis, who made the film Plandemic, did a fantastic deep dive into them and why they fact check with a liberal lens. Go watch all of his stuff. So, okay, let's correct this guy's statement. Number one, the Supreme Court does not make law. It interprets laws according to the Constitution. That is the document by which all laws are adjudicated. If there's no right spelled out in the Constitution, then they cannot create the right. It is not SCOTUS's job or purview to do that. Size and scope matter. So right out of the gate, a liberal will tell you that the Supreme Court has ended a right, even though none existed. Liberals point to the due process clause when it comes to abortion rights. But if you read Alito's reasoning, and I can guarantee you that less than 10% of people, let alone Democrats, actually read the majority opinion, you will see why the reasoning of Roe was flawed. And if you hate Samuel Alito, why not quote your favorite liberal justice, the notorious RBG, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Here's what she said about Roe v. Wade, quote, a less encompassing Roe, one that merely struck down the extreme Texas law and went no further on that day, might have served to reduce rather than fuel controversy. She also added, quote, the Supreme Court wrote modestly. It put forward no grand philosophy, but by requiring legislative reexamination of one's customary sex-based classifications, the court helped to ensure that laws and regulations would reflect a changing world. Roe v. Wade, in contrast, invited no dialogue with legislators. Instead, it seemed entirely to remove the ball from the legislator's court. In 1973, when Roe v. Wade was issued, abortion law was in a state of change across the nation. As the Supreme Court itself noted, there was a marked trend in state legislatures towards liberalization of abortion statutes." Unquote. So what RBG is saying is that the Roe decision was far too overreaching and set up for the showdown at the OK Corral that we see today. Roe tried to settle the issue broadly and not allow state legislatures to kind of figure it out as times changed. Now, conservatives have actually made this very same argument. So in Roe, SCOTUS ruled by fiat and did what they should never do, which is create law or create a right where none exists. They overreached. RBG thought that the proper approach to the issue was the Equal Protection Clause, not due process and right to privacy. 
Believe it or not, RBG represented a female Air Force captain while a lawyer at the ACLU. The Air Force was going to force that captain to get an abortion while she was serving in Vietnam, per their policy at the time. In Strzok versus Secretary of Defense, Susan Strzok won a stay, which prevented her discharge. And not only was she allowed to have the baby, the military dropped the case and reactivated her and they changed their policy. So RBG was championing a woman's right not to get an abortion. When you think about the vaccine mandates we currently see in the military, what happened in the 70s is deja vu. And I think that everyone would agree by now that the military or any company forcing a woman to get an abortion is wrong and violates equal protection. But the actual right to an abortion is not laid out in the Constitution. And RBG noted how Roe forced the issue a mere month after this struck case was decided. So when you hear that the court has erased a right, well, the only thing that they did that was radical per se is went against judicial precedent due to a reexamination of the reasoning. So when potential justices are asked how they might vote on a Roe type case, they usually say that they would follow judicial precedent, stare decisis. But if the reasoning used is inherently flawed, then the court can overturn it. And that's exactly what they did with Dobbs. RBG felt that the court could have ruled the Texas law in Roe unconstitutional without such a sweeping ruling that essentially created the right. Now let's look at the fallacy that guns have more rights than women, which was claimed. In fact, this guy says that the court, quote, imposed a constitutional right to concealed carry, unquote, erroneously acting as though the court made up the right itself. Well, if you read the Second Amendment, it's pretty clear that there is a right to bear arms. Now, there are differing interpretations about why that is and what the founders exactly meant, but the language is there, right behind the right to free speech. They considered it very important. So it's not that guns have more rights, it's that the Constitution spelled it out. With due process under the law and equal protection, we can see why treating a man and a woman differently would be wrong, and a man can't get pregnant. So the burden isn't the same. Wait, maybe a, a man can get pregnant according to Miss Universe, as I detailed in my last episode. You can see why this cultural Marxism thing is getting very, very, very real. And when you read Justice Alito's opinion, he spells out why Roe's reasoning was inherently flawed from the get-go. Furthermore, he says that the Roe ruling has inflamed our divisions, which we are seeing play out right now. And it seems that Alito would agree with RBG that Roe created a firestorm for 50 years, when if they had just ruled the Texas law unconstitutional and left it alone, state legislatures would have gradually caught up to the pace of shifting culture, which is true. With this new Dobbs ruling, it punts the issue back down to the states, which have elected officials who vote on things on your behalf. This is why you see different laws in different states, especially where there is no constitutional right. Bear in mind that the United States Congress could also create a federal law to protect abortion, but it takes two thirds passage in both the House and the Senate. If someone tells you abortion has been banned nationally, this is misinformation. But I doubt that you will see one liberal fact checker flag that on social media. In these posts that I've seen online, there is absolutely zero context missing notation on these types of posts. I just think that people should understand how laws work, who creates them, who interprets them, and who enforces them. And there are horrible ironies going on right now that, you know, think about the Marxist up north, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. He tweeted, no government politician or man should tell a woman what she can and cannot do with her body. I want women in Canada to know that we will always stand up for your right to choose. Lauren Chen responded to this tweet saying, I'm a woman. You tried to mandate I take a vaccine with unknown fetal side effects while I was pregnant. You don't care about women and you sure as hell don't care about bodily autonomy. Lauren Chen is spot on with the stinging criticism of Trudeau. He's virtue signaling and lying at the same time. He, like many governments, forced vaccine mandates on people, especially pregnant women, when the side effects for the mother and the baby were unknown and still mostly unknown. They have even revived an old SIDS or sudden infant death syndrome outbreak that they say is SIDS, but 
Mm, could be something else, we don't know. What we do know is that these mRNA vaccines do not prevent infection. That is plain as day. Now let's look at the reactions to the court's decision, which have been anything but peaceful. And I wanna quote from some of the Communist Party's stated goals from 1963 in a book called The Naked Communist. Goal number 26, present homosexuality, degeneracy, and promiscuity as normal, natural, and healthy. Number 23, control art critics and directors of art museums. Our plan is to promote ugliness, repulsive, meaningless art. Goal 42, create the impression that violence and insurrection are legitimate aspects of the American tradition, that students and special interest groups should rise up and use united force to solve economic, political, or social problems. Can you see how these goals, laid out in 1963, have widespread effects today? First, let's look at an actual lawmaker, Maxine Waters. You see this turnout here? You ain't seen nothing yet. Women are going to control their bodies no matter how they try and stop us. The hell with the Supreme Court. We will defy them. Women will be in control of their bodies. And if they think black women are intimidated or afraid, they got another thought coming. Black women will be out in droves. We will be out by the thousands. We will be out by the millions. We're going to make sure we fight for the right to control our own bodies. Thank you. To hell with the Supreme Court. We will defy them. You haven't seen nothing yet. Sounds peaceful, doesn't it? How about Senator Chuck Schumer? I want to tell you, Gorsuch, I want to tell you, Kavanaugh, you have released the whirlwind and you will pay the price. Okay, so pay the price, huh? Sounds equally peaceful. Now let's fly over to the Capitol in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, and in just minutes, you could see after that flash bangs into the crowd, sending thousands running in different directions, forcing our crews to take cover as well. You can hear the screaming, the, the feet pounding on the ground as everybody runs away, the absolute chaos unfolding. ABC 15 speaking with one woman who was there for it all about what she saw leading up to the moment that police sent that tear gas and flashbangs into the crowds. That looks like, that looks like tear gas to me and everybody running. It was a peaceful chanting protest. Nothing crazy happened and they shot tear gas from the Capitol building. You know, I just left Washington, D.C., and I'm really glad I got out of there because look at this sign. Night of rage hit the streets. You said you'd riot to our oppressors. If abortions aren't safe, you're not either. Jane's revenge. This same phrase was graffitied on the house right there. Looks extremely serene, doesn't it? On Saturday night in the wonderfully peaceful city of Portland, Oregon, rioters were seen smashing windows and committing numerous acts of vandalism downtown. Many of the rioters were in black which is what Antifa wears. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if many of these cats were Antifa. 